evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just to let everybody know, I'm not a member of the committee, uh, I'm just a committee clerk, uh, but I do have to take the first item, which is uh, for the uh, nomination and or appointment of a chair for the constituency committee of Rural West for the forthcoming municipal year. So, uh, do we have any nominations, please? Okay, uh, do we have any other nominations? No? Uh, can I have a show of hands then, please? It's uh, unanimous, thank you, Councillor Green. Take the chair. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need to nominate the vice chair? We will do it on all the <laughs> Jane, 
I know what a fantastic job she's done, and it's nice to see that she's uh, that that's being recognised more widely across the council. So, congratulations to Jane on that. Um, as I say, the agenda is fairly light, uh, and also uh, I'm conscious you have to be away at eight, um, David. So what? We can do is if we can cover off the constituency constituency uh, managers report if there's anything that we need to bring up from the from the minutes but I'll give it another five minutes or so and then maybe we'll move the agenda around so we start off with uh, public questions so we do public question time that allow because it's always quite um, uh, fun uh, in terms of that at, at this uh, at this particular constituency so maybe we can do that and people will have the benefit of your attendance if you can't answer and sure you'll make a note to take them away. Okay, so do you, want, do you want to pick a couple of items up off the minutes? Yeah, there were a couple of things, Chair. First of all, the gentleman who raised the issue of the bonfires and the Heron Road. Um, I did visit the site the following Saturday. It did involve our environmental health people. Um, they in turn reported it to the Environment Agency because the Environment Agency is the enforcing body. I was really pleased to say that it had all stopped, but I gather today of all days that the, the, the gentleman concerned has chosen to have another bonfire of waste material. So um, there's been a lengthy period where we appear to have sorted that, but I'll take it back again and obviously put it back into the system with our own people and the environment agents. I think secondly, someone asked about the bridge at West Kirby, the rail bridge. Um, I did look into that. Uh, it's Network Rail banned their work in, in years. They, they have blocks of years where they bring work forward. It appears that that bridge is, is not in the current programme, the current block, and it, it is currently indicated to be in the 2020-21 block, and even though it's in that block it isn't funded, so we will have to work with them to find the funding. So the time scale is longer than clearly was envisaged when the bridge was first made, made one way. But um, that's the current position in there, onward national rolling so what we're saying there is it wasn't a uh, some sort of despicable plot to make it better for Aldi. No. Okay. Could I just say we're not Yes, of course you can. We are. I don't know how to say something. It's an honour. No, it's an honour. I think someone's yeah. doing it for the gentleman. Oh, thank you. With the, the hipster in the corner is. We we are those of us at that end of the ward. We are concerned because it's already been closed the bridge for two over two years. And we were told that it was going to be closed for 18 months. And it now looks like it's going to be closed for at least another three years. Because I'll start the work till 2020. And I've got to say, this is a very poor show from British Rail or Rail Track, Rail Track, whatever it's called. And I'm just wondering, is there nothing that anybody here, David, in your high authority position as the deputy, Says Deputy Chief Executive, can we not approach the rail company and find out? Because that bridge has been closed now for this very long time. I mean, we are living with it, but it is a nuisance. Yeah, we can take it away and approach them. However, we, we don't have any direct influence over the way they program their work nationally. We can raise it with them, obviously, and take it back to them. Okay. Okay. Can so, so. We do have a question time a little bit further on. Is this related to the minutes? Well, in that case, David. Yeah, and then. I think I would just just add, if I may, that a number of the constituents of West Kirby and Thurston Ward, of course, live on the other side of that bridge, and a lot of them have complained to me that they can't get back easily to their own houses. All they can do is get into West Kirby itself. But coming, trying to get back to Orisdale Road and all the roads off there from alongside Aldi at the moment, it means they have to do a massive diversion round either Black Horse Hill or some of the other roads to get home. And they would like some pressure to be exerted. Uh, uh, David Armstrong, please, if you can find some way of adding a little bit of impetus to the priority need for that bridge to be sorted out as soon as possible. Thank you. Well, I believe you. I'm still nearly the assistant. Mike, sorry. Yes, just, just, a brief comment. just a brief comment, Chair, on the, the state of the bridge at West Kirby. It is appalling, but it is a consequence, we mustn't forget, being non political, Chair, of course, of privatisation. 
Um, and we, the taxpayers, are putting huge amounts of funding as subsidies into net it's network rail who are responsible for this. But because they're not accountable in the democratic process, they can get away with things like this. And it is appalling, absolutely appalling, but it is a consequence of privatisation as opposed to nationalisation, of course. Thank you, Chair. Okay. And, and um, yeah, I, without being political, I, I, I thought it was a Labour Secretary of State that renationalised it, but um, it relatively to be honest. Uh, and also, of course, if it was if it was nationalised like it was in the old days, we'd, pay, we'd be paying for all of it, wouldn't we? As opposed to just not putting in subsidies. So, anyway, uh, with that said and done, I is there anything else on the minutes that anyone wants to raise? I think there was a direct question again. I think it was, uh, was here with Jackie. Uh, are you okay? You all right? With yes. Yeah, okay. In that case, uh, we'll move on. I think we it's been about 10 minutes, so I reckon uh, <coughs> we're in, a, in the right time to just move the uh, public question time forward. That's, is that okay with the committee that we do have? Yeah. yeah. So if we now cover the um, question time, normally about an hour, and then we will cover the constituency managers <coughs> progress report, which for uh, the sake of uh, accuracy and brevity has been circulated. I think everyone should have a copy. So if we want to try public question time, um, did we? Right, okay. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Can we start here? Yes. Can you say your name and where you're from? Then, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Barry James. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. All hear me? I'm Barry James from Friends of Heron Road. Sorry, Barry, before you start, I'm conscious this is being filmed. Yeah, by Brace TV. I think. Just so as I'm clear, I don't know where we stand with GDPR and all that malarkey these days, but if I think if someone's ask, getting up and asking a question, you should make it clear that you're prepared to be identified, you might be identified okay. on, fine with on the TV, yeah. so, or on um, yeah. YouTube or whatever it was, so, yeah. I'm fine with just that. okay. Yeah. So sorry, where are you going? Yeah, yeah I'm Barry James from... Sorry, bring that microphone forward. Sorry, sorry. No, I think everybody can hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm Barry James from Friends of Heron Road Mells. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to outline our objectives. Um, our first main objective is Phase 4 of the Heron Road Stroke Sorghum Massey Improvement Scheme. We would like that implemented as soon as funds are available. Uh, in, the, in the short term, we'd like a fixed speed camera on the left-hand side of Heron Road, travelling from Hoylake. Now I say fixed speed camera because a handheld camera won't work. I'll explain why. I wrote to um, our police and community um, officer, uh, Jane, Jane Kennedy in Liverpool, uh, two years ago, and she sent along a traffic policeman with a handheld camera. There were two of them there. They stood there for half an hour, and at the end of that, I walked up and he said, I don't see what the problem is. Nobody's speeding, and I said, well, you're standing there with a high-vis jacket. All the other cars are coming the other way, flashing at all the other cars. I'm not surprised there's no problem. So that is the, the reason that I think we should have a fixed speed camera. Now, I got a letter from David Rees, the road safety officer in the council, and if I can just quote what he said, essentially speed cameras are an item of last resort to improve poor road safety histories. It, uh, unfortunately, Heron Road does not meet this criteria for a fixed speed camera based on its comparatively good road safety record. We've had seven road closures last year, we've had three this year. So how can that be classed as a good road safety record? Just down the road in Morton by the traffic lights, Hoylake Road,
There's a brand new speed camera, which is beautifully hidden by the trees, so I don't know why it's there. And to my knowledge, and I use that word virtually every day, there are no accidents there, but we can't have one in Heron Road. Sorry? Is that, your, is that your question or...? No, I haven't finished. Oh, right, no, okay. No, no, I'm just warming up. Well, um, just to be fair, Barry. Okay, I'll try, I'll try and be quick. Yeah, having yeah. some question time. Yeah. Um, yeah, Councillor Patrick, um, it's down to funding, obviously. Um, and I did notice in the minutes um, when Jackie commented about the parking charges you stated that uh, because of budget cuts to local government, um, that that was the problem. Um, when the government, when when the council are lending large sums of money, I don't see how that can be a problem, because if we're on borough council, have got no money, then what about the councils that you're lending money to? Um, yeah, if we can just finish. Um, so, I don't see why you're not putting money back into the community. It'd be far better. Um, so, just getting back to the funding. Can we please possibly have David Rees here next meeting? Because two meetings ago, uh, Mr Chairman, you asked if David Rees would come to the next meeting, which was last March and answer the questions or come up with some reason yeah. what he was going to do about Heron Road and he wasn't able to attend. So can we please ask that he comes to our next meeting? Uh, absolutely we can and I think David's made a note. We have a, we've had a, have you, have you done Barry? So can uh, we, yes. so we're ready for yes. answers, okay, do you want to, yeah, there we go. Uh, there's a few, I, I think you, you wanted to, uh, Say a quick word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, Heron Road is a, a long-standing issue. Um, I've spoken with Barry several times, and I support um, everything that he says about Heron Road. Of course, in terms of the council, they look at it as a risk assessment, and the, the sad fact is, but because there hasn't been a serious accident on Heron Road, it doesn't warrant, in those terms, um, the investment. But there are so many minor accidents on that road that I do fear that it's only a matter of time before we do hit the jackpot. Because there's wing mirror after wing mirror after minor collision that just doesn't get reported, not in the statistics. Um, and I do support Barry and his aims in this. And if Barry, it might just be just very useful if you just say what the former profession was, because I think that is quite important that you've got a professional background. As a driving instructor for 40 years. Well done. Um, that takes, uh, not only has he got professional interest, he's probably got nerves of steel as well. <laughs> uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, just before I, because there was a direct question to Matthew. Uh, uh, we've got uh, Stuart, who of course is the cabinet member with responsibility for roads, road safety, all things tarmac. Would you like to mention about why, was it three road closures for um, serious incidents and so on? Doesn't warrant the um, doesn't count in the statistics. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, those questions. So, so, so obviously, um, when it comes to placing speed cameras, it's, it's not just council criteria. There's a national DFT that uh, criteria, and obviously, you know, we're going to ask David if he can uh, attend the next uh, constituency committee. And they'll be able to explain the technical reasons, but it's, it's not just down to you know, the council where we can put speed cameras. Um, yes, they're very expensive, but there's, there's a view uh, amongst the general public that it's a cash cow, um, and as such, there's a, a very strict uh, set of criteria and some of some of criteria is around uh, you know, serious serious accidents, whether it be no serious injuries or, or deaths. Um, the the, phase, the the question about phase four, um, I'm not familiar with that, so um, obviously I think David's made notes, so we'll, we'll come back on that one. Um, okay, I'm not, okay. okay, thank you for that, uh, Stuart. I did promise that there was a direct question about um, 
First of all, it's interesting to hear Stuart say he's, he's prepared to let a cash cow go go, go walk about, which is uh, quite rare for the, uh, for the cabinet just at the moment. Uh, but go on. Chair, chair, chair. chair. I'm, 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 no, there's no way I would agree to influence speed counts as a cash cow. No, no first, there's a revenue problem that does come to the council that, that goes to uh, goes to the police uh, and, I see. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the government. Um, so I absolutely reject um, you know, the idea that you know, we, we put speed counts into cash cows. Um, committee may be interested to know uh, earlier this week we launched our road safety strategy and uh, the, 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 the theme through the road safety strategy is shared roads, shared responsibilities. So it's, as, as road users, it's all our responsibilities for the road safety. Okay. Uh, well, Matthew, you want to Thank you, Chair. Um, and Barry's spoken at a few of our constituency committees now um, about the issues of home road and um, they have my full sympathy. I think we need to get something sorted. I think it's not good enough. Um, and I'm always frustrated personally by the idea that you've got, I understand the rationale behind it, but I'm always frustrated when you hear the answer back, but there's been no serious accident because I was always taught you go and fix something before it turns into a bigger problem. Don't wait for the big problem and, and then sort it. So I. You have my absolute sympathy and, and, and support in, in doing what you're trying to get done. Um, I've, Stuart's just illuminated me there in terms of who makes the decision um, about um, speed cameras and where the um, funding and income comes from. I don't know if anyone has an idea about how much they cost, because I know there were sort of, we had, how much? 70,000. 70,000, seems a bit, even more, seems a bit expensive. Um, but, I, if, if there is if there's lobbying to be done um, for further funding to come down to, to fund something like this, then I would support it. I think it's important, and hopefully the police. You said Jane Kennedy, the Police and Crime Commission, is aware of those issues. <coughs> hopefully, then if it came back on her radar, she'd be she'd be aware of that as well. Yeah. Of course, I appreciate the financial situation everyone's in, but I also I think this is long overdue for the people of Heron Road. Um, the question, um, Barry, you asked me about the. Um, financial loaning of lots of money from the council to other councils. I mean, it would take, I think, hours to go into the technical, but the very basic reason for this is it brings money into the council. So there are certain, in a really simplistic way, there are certain um, bills we've got to pay down the line. So um, if we were doing it in, in terms of your and my situation personally, we might have a car insurance bill in October that's going to cost us £500. If there's an equivalent for the council in terms of their insurance bills or, or, or um, money that's been set aside to pay for a project in November or December, rather than it sitting, to, it's sitting in an account that earns next to nothing in terms of um, interest rates, I think I get about 0.1% of my bank account at the moment, the idea of making very short, um, short term loans actually brings money back in. Now, don't quote me and David Armstrong, hopefully you'll get a better figure here, but I think that that's in the tens of thousands, it's brought back in to the council that we can then reinvest into services. So I appreciate it. When you first see that, you think, why is that going on? But then when you get the answer, hopefully that helps to know that actually all it is about prudent financial management to make sure that the money that is being spent on the world, whilst it's waiting to be spent, is being put to the best use so we can get that money back and get more in from the residents. Um, but, but you have my support on the heroin road issue as well, and maybe David Armstrong might know the figure on the, on the money brought back in. Yeah, and, and, and just before I bring David in, just to give a degree of balance, I think we also, the council runs with a huge level of reserves, and every time they are questioned, we're told oh, no, they're needed for this, or they're needed for insurance, or whatever. And lo and behold, as the, as the year goes on, somehow the cabinet and the council managed to release those reserves and, and, and utilise them for something else. So, just to say this money's held for an insurance policy sometime in the future and can't be used, isn't borne out by what the council has done year on year since this particular administration has been in place. So, I just wanted to, I just wanted to make that clear. I'm now, I'm now going to invite David, I'm now going to invite David to respond. So, you know, you had you had your opportunity to put your interpretation on, uh, and I've just given my evidence as I see it borne out by both. So, David. Thank you, Chair. As the neutral party in all of this, as the officer, um, the council does receive, the council has two budgets, just like at home, the revenue budget for day-to-day -day expenses and the capital budget, which is based for the big stuff. The revenue budget is extremely tight, and you've heard that again and again, um, due to the national austerity, which I'm not to carry on. 
It has access to capital, it does get capital grants. We sometimes get capital grants for big schemes, we get the capital in a big chunk from government that we pay it out to a contractor over a period of time. So sometimes that money is lent out on short term, very short term measures to other councils. The money comes back because in the end it has to pay for the scheme it is. I think last year that generated £300,000, around three to £400,000 of income to the council. The council can also borrow capital from a national board, a subgroup of government, the treasury, and it can borrow capital at extremely good rates. And that's the proposal, and it's no more than a proposal, as you know, is that the council could consider give consideration to approving borrowing money to lend to the promoters of the golf resorts, but that money would make a financial return to the council. Just in terms of Heron Road, we have corresponded on this, I did take it away from the last meeting. I'm reluctant to ask Dave Rees to come back to the next meeting. He came about three meetings ago and dealt with a whole range of things, simply because he's not the decision maker here. The police have three levels of speed enforcement, and then there's a fourth one which is volunteers. The first one is a fixed camera, and as you say, Dave Rees has discussed this with the police, and the police have come to the conclusion that it's not an appropriate location, it doesn't meet the criteria laid down nationally and laid down that the police use. I'm happy to take that back to them again. Um, the, the, there was an added reason that I was told, which was the road was too bendy to have a camera. You've rightly pointed out there is a straight stretch near where you live. I'm happy to take that back again. The second one is that they have a van, the van with the camera appearing out of the back that you always see at the last minute. Um, again, they've said that it, that <coughs> the road is not suitable for that to be deployed in that area. The third one is the, is the police officers standing there and you've described that. And the fourth one, which Dave Reese referred to in his letter to you, was that there is a volunteer scheme where volunteers can carry out a speed watch program and, and uh, inconsiderate drivers that are reported to them police will write to them, but I accept that's a low level of impact compared to a camera and compared to a police officer enforcing the law. So I'm happy to take it back again, but that the position you rightly outlined is, 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 is it's the police who make the decision and they feel it doesn't make the criteria. Yeah, can I just check something there, David? Two things. A, I'd love to think that you are independent and objective, but of course you work for an administration that have a responsibility to speak up for them. That's number one. And number two, number, number two, Number two is that if we as a committee ask Dave to come along to a meeting in order to respond to public concerns, I would be loath for officers then to say, well, that's all very well, but we're not going to ask him. So if a constituency committee has asked for an officer to come along to respond to resident concerns, I would be personally really concerned if that officer to say, taking a second guess and say, well, he appeared three, three meetings ago, which is nine months ago. He's not coming back. So I, 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 only, I only make a point, Chair, that we can bring him back and we can talk this through, and he's not the decision maker. That's the point. Well, he, yeah, but he might not be the fight, but he's, he surely has a major input into that discussion. Otherwise, why have a road safety officer? Would be the question. So, one presumes that we're all has a road safety view that it can put forward. So, I think we would like to uh, would like to see him again. Um, that's. <coughs> If that's, um, well, if that is it, is it the will of the committee that we see Dave Reese again, by the way? Yeah. Just chat. Yeah, can I just, yeah. can I just, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy for Dave Reese to come here. I'm also conscious that we've got officers obviously very busy and, and having two hour meetings. It seems that it's a specific concern about Heron Road, and I wonder if it would be pertinent to ask <laughs> Dave Reese to meet specifically with the Heron Road group. If there are other issues that come up following question time, then absolutely. But specifically for the Heron Road group, that might be a better resource use of time to right. give direct comment as well? Uh, well. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, but I think we've said, I, I think there will be other road safety issues that will come up because they always do. And there might be others that appear later. So I think if it's the committee's view that we should invite Dave Reese to come along, um, can I just check? Do we want Dave to come to the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah? Please, yeah. Just, yeah. Okay, that's agreed. Then. Um, okay, hopefully a non-contentious, non-political uh, question coming up. A uh, gentleman there. Uh, Ken Roberts, 19 Heron Road. Microphone. Thank you, Ken. Microphone. And uh, telephone systems, no telephone systems, something other. Um, yeah. Last, I'd just like to thank all of the council members for the efforts they made to op operate the... Um, and the bonfire school, 
which has been extremely successful. From the last meeting, I don't think there was any fires at all. There was not even any rubbish being dropped after the photographs showed you the, the mattresses and such like. The ground. So thanks, everyone. We have had a fire today, but I, I think it was a tidy up opportunity. It looked to me to be mostly old twigs and branches that had been left from the previous mess. However, I'll keep an eye on that. On the Heron Road itself, I apologise for bringing this back in, but following on from where Barry left, I'm a bit of a pessimist and I can't see Heron Road full modifications being done for about another 10 years, by which time I'll be well out of the equation. However, I have listed a load of questions, quite a lot of questions, four major ones, that have been passed to me by residents involved. And if I may just whiz through this, I've shown this on a sheet, <coughs> like so. The black text, the first paragraph, is a resume of what's happened since 1968. Well, that was when I was born. Um, and the red text underneath the questions is the sort of work that could be done on a small budget but to still do a lot to improve the situation for the residents. For instance, one, question one, is the traffic volume and speed are an absolute must. They've got to be sorted somehow. The noise generated on the road surface wakes you up at five in the morning. If the front bedrooms of the houses on Heron Road are just about out of use because, as I say, if you want to get up at five o'clock in the morning, fine. First traffic goes by, the noise is tremendous. I've just spent 2,000 quid on having the windows in my front bedroom operated with, with soundproof type parts. Well, it isn't soundproof, but it's sound resistant. However, that, I, on the red check on that, I think that this could be reduced considerably by resurfacing the, lo the, the, the road Heron Road, alongside the, resident, the residences. If that's done with a small road, like a small, a, a fine, smooth tarmac, like it's being done on the motorways in sections now, the noise would virtually disappear by about 50%. So I've suggested that, the red, and the red writing is that. The second one is a surface water drain, which is loose, it's becoming damaged. And then when vehicles pass over that, there's an almighty clank and a bang, and the houses vibrate. That, and the answer to that one is obvious, but again, small, relatively small cost, and not being, and will still be valid, even if the Heron Road modification does go. Third one is more and more HGVs are using Heron Road as a link road from the motorway, presumably to the Hoy Lake West Kirby area. Now, it's been suggested that this is because the lorries have sat-navs, and the sat-navs are telling them, that, telling the drivers that that's the shortest route. What it doesn't tell them is that the road is only 18 feet wide in parts, and it's um, extremely densely trafficked. So, I've suggested there that we should be able to, add to contact the mapping sections of SATNAV manufacturers and ask them not to put down Heron Road on any direct route from the motorway into the local area. It's a thought, but it do. Only second, the second point could be that we put as I have done at Thornton Huff and several other places that I've seen around the borough, signs say restricting heavy goods vehicles for, on using that particular stretch of road. It's completely fun. Some, about last year sometime, I, I've mentioned this before, two <coughs> articulated wagons met at the zigzags and took about nearly half an hour to clear, by which time you can imagine where the traffic reached to. So that's another thing that could be sorted out, again on a small budget, but as a single thing which would improve the overall situation. Finally, 
the, the people who live behind Heron Road on the Acres Road Bridgeway section have one hell of a time getting their cars out of the Acres Road or out of the Bridgeway because of the amount of traffic. And the Acres Road one particularly has virtually no visibility. You can't see down the road until your bonnet is touching the central line. That is not, well, it, I, I, it doesn't affect me, but that's not funny as far as driving is concerned there. And at the same end, at the Ridgeway end, the traffic coming round off the Hoylake Road also can't be seen until the last minute. Again, so something needs to be done there. And otherwise, there's, there's some other stuff in there. If you read through it later, you can plug in if you want to speak to me or shout at me or whatever, that's fine. But I've, I've written here, ideally the provision of speed cameras or speed bumps on the road would ensure that the traffic speeds and the possibility of serious accidents would be significantly reduced. Okay, Ken, that's it. I, I think what we have done, because you kindly listed those out and put the questions in red and the ideas, um, David is going to take those away. Is there any officer you can ask not to come that we can say we'd like him here? If you want to tell us about that. Okay. All right, okay. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks, Ken. That's okay. duly, duly noted. Um, Okay, any more questions? There are lots of hands going up. What happened the very beginning? Yeah, but everyone's confused. Uh, the lady at the back with her hand up. That would be it. Um, I'm just going to read for Collie Residence. I am just going to take them or anything. There is a picture. I'll check, thanks David, I'll share the meeting. If you want to share, that's fine. If you need the microphone, it's fine. Um, what I would like to know as the council has a responsibility for public health. And along with other parts of the country, uh, Wirral has a problem with obesity and dental health in children. When I go into lots of council buildings, in particular the buildings that are there for our health, like our leisure centres, there are lots of sweets and, shall we say, plastic bottles of fizzy drinks on sale in council buildings. Now, I would like the council to take a lead and to show people that this is not healthy and they shouldn't be having them. Probably they do it because it's a source of income, but I think it's probably <coughs> affecting the health of Wirral and costing money in other ways. I would like the council to take a lead and not have for sale in any of their public areas vending machines that have sweets, fizzy drinks and awful food there. I go to the leisure centres regularly. I can't get fresh fruit, I can't get healthy stuff, but I could spend a lot of money on unhealthy things. They don't even have, in West Kirby Concourse on the ground floor, where I go regularly for activities, there isn't even a water fountain. I would have to buy water. I take my own, but there isn't a water fountain. So could I ask the council, a please to show everybody a lead in health and get rid of these vending machines from their areas? Thank you very much. Can I just also add something else? I would like the council to give me an update on maybe the closing of Woodchurch Leisure Centre. I would like to know what might be happening about that, because I have read something about it in the paper, and us regular users are rather concerned about what may be happening there. And while we're talking about road safety and all the stuff from Heron Road, when you put the yellow lines further down the road here, along Church Road and the junction with uh, Mount Road, you didn't put them across the top of the T-junction where we asked them for. You can't get out of that junction without mounting the pavement either side. It's really dangerous. Could you just not put the yellow lines where we asked you? Thank you. Okay. I, I just want to reassure you that I didn't personally put the lines anywhere. <laughs> but, uh, but, yes, Mike, of course. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for your like. Um, well said, I fully support you. We shouldn't be, the council, as the council, we should be setting the lead and taking all the, the fizzy drinks and the unhealthy food. And I'd like to respond, if I may, Chair, on the Woodchurch issue. I and my family use Woodchurch regularly, and there's rumours, I may add, that it's going to become, now this is a pearl of this, the Woodchurch is going to become an aquatic centre. Now what that is, is jargon for closing all the rest of the centre. And I've had people coming in my ward, which is pens me a thing, well, 
who go to the um, the keep fit classes, and there's between 50 and 70 residents regularly attending that keep fit. Fit, and the other one is yoga at the woodshed. Again, 50 to 70 residents. Now we're looking at it. The ward councillors from Upton are looking into that, and my colleague Phil Brightmore is also looking into it because I think. We shouldn't be closing that. We shouldn't. Um, it's, led on, it's led to uncertainty from the staff because the staff tell me that they've had a meeting with officers from the council who've informed them. I think it's a parallel about the aquatic centre. Um, it's jargon for closing. And we are going to, um, to fight that. And I know the ward councillors from Upton are. So I hope that clarifies that. Well, um, Thanks, Mike. Well, happily, happily, we have got a, a, a number of board councillors from Upton here, um, two of whom are in the cabinet, so they'll know any secret nefarious plans that might be ongoing. So, Matthew, do you just want to update us on this one to Angela and that? Yeah, thanks, um, Angela. Thanks, Mike. Um, I, I support um, what Mike said. Uh, what I wanted to say, firstly, from two perspectives. One, I spoke to Councillor Brighton, who's the cabinet member looking at this, so I have a short um, look at an email he sent me so I can give you some information there. And the other thing is I know from the Upton councillors that we really value the service that the Woodchurch Leisure Centre gives residents and there's no way we're going to be content with seeing that um, um, that closed, as you said. So, so um, hopefully that gives some reassurance. Phil Brightmore um, spoke to me before. Um, I know there's constant, I, don't, I haven't seen these specific press reports that this is discussing. I know there's consultation about um, how we can try and save money um, with staff. And I think the reason that's yet to go more public is that that's following staff consultation then uh, a broader consultation might change so that it might get different ideas out. Um, and I know from what, from speaking to Phil that he's absolutely committed to finding ways to keep that service open. Um, he says in the last couple of years alone, um, the position about um, position of providing uh, leisure centres and services have been, has improved um, by £3 million pounds in terms of reducing the subsidy um, in the last couple of years alone. But there's obviously still, um, there's still, there's still cost pressures there. Um, and I know that he's, he's been pursuing um, getting other public bodies um, to consider sort of co-location and getting involved in those areas to try and make it the most efficient it can be. So hopefully, uh, that's just a short email I've, I've, I've had from Phil Brightmore, but I, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer more detailed questions. Okay, and I'm sure we've made a... Hang on, sorry. Um, and I'm sure we've made a note about the suggestion on um, uh, foodstuffs and stopping fizzy drinks and all that sort of stuff. Do you want to pick up as ward councillors about the where you put the yellow lines in Upton? Yeah. yeah. And, and Stuart, you're the man in charge of yellow lines. Do you want to respond to that? <laughs> so, apparently it's going to be taken up. We've got a note here, so maybe we can have a report. Can we have a report back at the next meeting, maybe? If it's simply a case of someone's put them in the wrong place, uh, then that should be relatively straightforward to deal with, shouldn't it? They haven't finished the job, but some of them they said, but they haven't put all of them. Okay. So, Jay, just to be clear, I don't want to take the regular ones even if someone else does that so well. No, no, but you are accountable to those people who do put the other lines down. That comes with the job. Okay, that was a good one. Uh, uh, there's a person directly behind, there we are, the gentleman who was taking the microphone around. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the microphone. 